very warm welcome to the video. Today we are discussing the topic of compression socks or aerodynamic socks in cycling in triathlon, more so in triathlon. Do they offer a benefit? All the pros are doing it. Well, a lot of the pros are doing it. Not all of them. Uh, should you be doing it? So this is probably the best article I could find, which essentially um, comprised 100 and 83 studies and draw con drew conclusions after their little, you know, well, fairly decent sized meta analyses. So, one thing we want to talk on, like one thing that's important to note before we jump into it, just because the pros do something, it does not mean it's the right thing for you. Remember, professional athletes are making a living. And if they're approached by a company and that company says, hey, we will give you. Uh, $10,000 to wear our socks at Kona. Of course, you're going to do it, whether you think they help or not. So the equipment that the pros use should never be uh, used as a, a a gauge as to what 100% you should be doing. You know, often they have the very best of the best. Um, but, you know, just always keep in mind that some of the things or many of the things that the pros use or where maybe they wouldn't otherwise be doing it if they were just funding it themselves and they had that kind of freedom of choice to really, you know, uh, wear whatever they wanted. But nonetheless, Blumenfeld wore them in the 70.3 World Championships, Laidlow wore them in the um, Ironman World Championships. Many other athletes have been wearing them, professionals. So what's the go? So in terms of absolute performance this study here this was from the journal of sports medicine 2022 study uh, analysis of what's out there a systemic review putting the squeeze on compression garments current evidence and recommendations for future research a systemic scoping review so compression garments are regularly worn during exercise to improve physical performance mitigate fatigue response and enhance recovery however evidence for their efficacy is varied and the methodological uh, uh, methodological approaches and outcomes measured used within the scientific literature are diverse so some studies say yeah they work others say don't um, I'm not going to dive right into the study but I'll link it if you you really want to have a look um, you know a total of 183 studies were identified for qualitative analysis qualitative analysis with the following breakdown performance so this is important performance and muscle function outcomes biomechanical and neuromuscular blood and saliva markers this is looking for lactate levels etc cardiovascular cardiorespiratory thermoregulatory and perceptual uh, and the placebo or the you know your perceived uh, response to wearing something if you think it's going to help it's probably going to help so that's a big thing to take into mind so conclusions, compression garments increased, oh, hey, let's start here. Findings suggest potential increases in arterial blood flow. However, it is unlikely that compression garments meaningfully change metabolic processes, blood pressure, heart rate, and cardiorespiratory measures. Compression garments increase localized skin temperature and may reduce perceptions of muscle soreness and pain following exercise. But increased temperature isn't something you would like in a hot race like Kona, in a humid environment like Kona. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You need to pay, you need to weigh up the benefits to the, the trade-offs. And this may be a trade-off depending on the race. Something like St. George, where it was really cold, this is likely a desired benefit. Um, however, rating of perceived exertion during exercise is likely unchanged. It is unlikely that compression garments negatively influence exercise-related outcomes. Future research should assess uh, where a belief in compression garments report pressure ranges at multiple sites as well as garment material and finally examine individual responses and varying compression coverage areas. So based on all evidence we have so far, essentially it's inconclusive as to whether the actual effect on the muscle itself and the compression is all that you know beneficial. It's at least not negatively. Um, it's not like adversely going to affect performance unless you overheat or something like that. However, this is going to be individual specific. It's going to depend on your biomechanics. It's going to depend on your calf size. 
So it's going to maybe benefit someone with bigger, less lean calves more than someone with super skinny calves that otherwise don't, when they're running, you know, have all that vibration going through them. But one thing that's really important and isn't looked at in a study like this is the aerodynamic effect. So we notice that all these pros, they're not only wearing them on the run, they're putting them on either, well, they're putting them on before the bike, basically. So they're taking extra, extra time in transition to put them on before the bike or they're swimming with them. So in that sense, this is where we look for the aerodynamic effects. And in the cycling industry, there's many brands coming out with specific aero socks, claiming all kinds of things, saying like, you know, this sock will improve or save you a total of anywhere from six, eight, up to some of the brands are even saying 12 watts. Now, that's a pure aero sock. That's not like one of these compression socks slash aero socks that are kind of like a hybrid that the triathletes are wearing. But we need to take into account, okay, even if it saved them, say, half of that, say four watts, three or four watts, that's still going to be a substantial saving in overall energy, um, time on the bike. When you spend more than 50% of the time in an Ironman on the bike, any kind of aero advantage is going to be significant. So that's where I'd say in terms of aerodynamic savings, this is where it's going to come into or where they're going to come into their um you know, into their own in, in terms of the actual benefits from a fatigability or a muscular performance side of things. The, you know, the evidence is kind of 50, 50. And I think individual response to this is going to be important. So do your own research, do your own trying and testing and trialing and training and make a decision based on your perception as to how well they work for you. Some people may hate them. Other people may think that, you know, they actually make my legs feel pretty good. I feel like I'm not fatiguing as much. And that may well be the case. But even if it is just all placebo, that is still going to give you an advantage because if you're going to feel like you've got more in the tank, you're going to feel better. That's going to help your race. So main takeaways that I would say from all this, aero socks or aero, aero socks or compression socks on the bike, advantageous, 100% on the actual muscle performance 50 50 and i think it really depends on the individual athlete some with a lot of varicose veins etc that needs that going to benefit a lot other people you know it's up in the air but i would say don't rush out to buy them just because the pros are using them because remember not all the pros are using them and if they were that much of a performance benefit every single professional athlete because they're not expensive for you know some of these perceived benefits Every single athlete would be wearing them. So just because some pros do it doesn't mean it's right for you. And remember, there's always sponsorships. There's always financial incentives and money. And these athletes are making a living. So of course, they're going to say, yeah, I will wear your socks if it means that I get an, a, an extra five grand or 10 grand by doing this race in them. So always keep that in the back of your mind when making a decision to buy anything and always do you know, your own research. But I think it's a pretty benign thing to spend money on socks. It's not like you're going to drop a thousand dollars. So, you know, worth a shot, I think, but make the decision to wear them based on how they feel for you. Not just because, you know, the professionals are doing it or whatever, if that makes sense. So take care guys. Um, and I will see you in the next video.